Before we continue, I wanted to share some exciting news with you. My new online on-demand program, How to Advance Your Career with Your Current Employer, is officially live and ready for you. So if you're looking to speed up your career progress, check this program out via the link in the description. We talked about the changing world and, and the adaptability that is, that is needed from, from an individual. Um, it is given that an L&D department cannot cater for a thousand different customized programs for all the needs. Mm -hmm. because the spectrum is increasing so, so heavily. Um, how can an individual talent best take charge of their professional learning and development and therefore advance their career success? Um, either within the company or, or outside on, on their own? Yeah, uh, good, great question. <laughs> uh, I love this question because this is something I do feel quite strongly about. So my advice is don't wait for things to come to you. Don't wait for people to come to, to you with development opportunities. Um, raise your hand, ask for opportunities. And if you get rejected, ask again or ask for someone, ask someone else. Um, keep, keep at it, look for mentors in the organization, look for um, people who will champion you, people who will support you. I would say take risks. So get outside your comfort zone. Um, I've definitely in my own career raised my hand for a lot of things that were definitely outside of my comfort zone and were a stretch, but I knew they would be great learning opportunities. And I knew that that from that experience that would help my career and so always embrace the discomfort in this any sort of kind of development challenge that you're you're, you're you potentially are going to take on um i think for me it's again don't get don't get discouraged when someone shuts the door on you is, is a big one you know i can think of an, a past experience where I had um, actually was assigned a, a mentor um, in a past organization. And I told her that I really wanted to get more involved in kind of global opportunities because my role was, was a lot more kind of locally focused. And she told me, oh, you're, you're way too new in the organization. Um, you're, you're not gonna get this opportunity. No one knows you. They don't know your reputation. They don't know the quality of your work. So there's, there's just no chance for that. And I'm a stubborn person, so luckily I didn't listen to her, and um, I kept at it. And I and I I knew from her those opportunities wouldn't happen because she was very clear that 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 door was closed for her supporting this. But there was someone else I knew who um, who was a huge supporter of me and 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 really cared about my development. And so I reached out to her to for opportunities, and and she did provide opportunities to me for me, and I did get to do um, some. Uh, global projects and so I'm glad that I was stubborn not to listen when the first door closed and to keep looking for opportunities so for me that that first um, piece of advice from just don't give up and ask don't wait for it to come to you put yourself out there I think that's the most important thing to be proactive great wonderful advice thank you <laughs> um, you're welcome thinking about the work tenures we we know that especially with the millennials and, and, and the kind of a gig economy where we live in, mm -hmm. uh, tenures are getting, we're talking about average of, of three years in the US mm -hmm. uh, and Europe is kind of somewhere below four. Mm -hmm. um, how can l and departments increase talent retention, uh, the development of people with their activities? How would you see this? Yeah, so, so first off, I don't think L&D can work in isolation. I think there's a lot of other, you know, they have to work the business with reward with with different areas um, that 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 are important for employees to to be retained, you know. Um, but I, I would say that the number one thing is um, providing um, career paths that are clear uh, for employees, um, because oftentimes that's one of the, the biggest pieces of feedback that comes back through engagement surveys from employees, which is that they don't know where and how to develop their career. And, you know, I do still feel strongly that career development and, and how you develop your career is essentially it's up to the individual, it's up to the employee. But I think we do, you know, L&D departments do have a responsibility to 
provide career pathing to options to kind of show opportunities and and paths that could be potential ones. Um, so the, the other thing with that is showing paths that are not just the traditional route. So we often see in many organizations, you know, you know, you in order to move in your career, you need to move from, you know, an analyst to a manager to a senior manager, mm -hmm. these kinds of routes. And, and, you know, a lot of employees don't want that path. They don't want to necessarily go into a leadership or management position. They might want to be an expert in their own area. And so to provide opportunities that are career developments, opportunities that are lateral moves or an opportunity to grow in your own area um, it is something that's that's important for for a lot of people. So I think being more creative and in, in the kind of career pathing that we offer that we offer is 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 really critical more and more. Um, you know, I, I work in tech, so again, we see this a lot with with developers, right? So a lot of them don't want to go into manager roles. They like what they do. They actually enjoy coding. And so, um, and and the thing that has come up when when I've talked to people who then go into management roles, et cetera, is that that's what they miss, right? So how can we? I think it's thinking creatively. How can we provide career development opportunities that also give them a chance to keep a bit of the stuff they love. Now we know that they have to kind of focus more in other areas, more strategic work, et cetera. But is there opportunities to give people, you know, can we can we include, let's say, open source projects in in um, and allow for some free time for for some of our staff to do that sort of thing in in their work mm -hmm. environment? Can we offer global uh, global mobility opportunities for people to move across geographies? That's something for for a lot of businesses to consider. So I think there's a lot of ways that we can rethink how we develop career paths and also how we actually develop our our, our potential and our talent in non-traditional uh, routes. Mm. I love that because uh, the fact that everything starts with the question to the individual, what is career advancement to you? What does mm -hmm. it mean? Is it moving? Is it is it going up in the ranks? Is it lateral moves? I really like that. You know? Thank yeah. you. Yeah. What about if, if talent comes in, uh, let's say a, a fast, rapidly growing uh, tech startup mm -hmm. and the talent tries to keep up and learn as much as possible, but doesn't really know where to focus on in mm -hmm. their development? What would be advice? Yes. So I would say start with your job itself and look at what are the key skills, competencies, behaviors required for your role? And if you're not aware what those are, find them out, right? Ensure that you know what is what are the expectations for your role and where are you at um, around them? And how, how can you find out where you're at and, and how you're progressing with those competencies and skills is to get feedback, right? So most organizations have some sort of like free feedback net mechanism built in. Um, it can be informal or more formal feedback, but, but get input from your peers, direct reports from, you know, the people above. Um, some organizations have really great 360s built into them, and I think a 360 is an awesome way uh, to, to get feedback as well. Um, and if you don't have these kind of mechanisms or tools built in, then, then the do it the old-fashioned way, just asking for feedback. Um, but this is where you're going to get really great input on your blind spots, on what you're doing well, what's not going well, and what perhaps could be blocking you from progressing in your career. And, also think about what are, you know, if you have an idea of what your next role could look like, if you have an, a sense of what your career pattern could be, then I would also recommend you think about for that next role, what are the skills and behaviors you're going to need for that role? What is going to help you move from your current role to that role? Are there any overlapping competencies? And if so, mm. how can you focus on developing those specific areas to then help you in your short term goals? while also addressing your long-term goals. Because for me, that's the most effective way to um, strategically develop your career is, is to work on both at the same time, essentially. Um, and yeah, that can look a little bit different for, for, for everyone. Um, I am a very high um, proponent of non-formal um, development. So on the job experiences, shadowing, uh, taking on special projects, secondments, volunteering for things um and and a formal training of course can help but i would say you know there's this 
I think in LD we call the 70 20 10 rule. And essentially, basically, it's that what, what that rule looks like is 70% of our development and our learning comes from non formal on the job experiences, 20% comes from social learning, and 10, only 10% comes from formal learning, which, uh, which is why I'm, I'm a big proponent of the on the job experiences. Interesting. Very good. So let's say now I'm the candidate who knows what I'm what I need to develop in. Mm -hmm. But my direct manager is not very active in learning and development and does not have the same urgency as I feel. What can I do as an employee? So I think it's your responsibility to show um, <laughs> your direct manager the value that de the development will bring to the day to day work. So how is it going to support you achieving your deliverables through accomplishing what you need to accomplish and your projects on, you know, getting to your backlog, I don't know, whatever it may be, right? But you need to be able to make that connection to show the value in, in your day to day. And if you can't, then maybe actually it's not that urgent for your development right now on the job. Maybe it's something you do outside of work. So that, that would be the first piece of advice. And the second is to find people outside who are going to mentor and support. So there's a lot of people out there who can take on mentoring roles and supportive roles uh, that are not necessarily your direct manager. Um, I have a lot of people I go to day to day for different needs um, that I know I can reach out to for support. So it's developing that network. And going back to your question on networking, again, it's when you have that network, then you, then you know also, you know, um, who are the people who are, you know, experts in certain areas or have certain skills, then that that may be the right people to reach out to when it comes to also your own development at some at some point. Great, great advice. Um, and finally, I want to ask one question on your current top three topics um, on skills that you're currently training for your employees. Yeah, so I would say um, uh, data analytics is a really key one. It covers all sorts of jobs. You know, we can see the, the importance of data more and more um, in most organizations. Um, it's a key contributor to, to decision making, right? So um, we want to have data driven decision making across organizations. And in order to do that, we really need to have people understanding how to use data um, and how to understand it and how to make decisions with it. So I would say that's one big one. Machine learning is becoming more and more important also in organizations. Um, and, and, uh, and so that, that is probably another key area that more and more organizations are, are, are upskilling their employee base on. And then I think another one, and this is probably more specific to certain um, job functions and in certain industries more than others. So, you know, I see um, working with a lot of people in tech, I see that from the product and tech world, um, there is probably a big gap around financial understanding, understanding of kind of a P&L, um, financial strategy, the impact of financial decisions on, on what does it mean for products and, and things like that. So. So in specific areas, I would say that the financial piece um, would be a great asset to upskill oneself on. It, as you, again, as, as, you're, as you mentioned, like kind of the big, big areas and, and the key trends that I'm seeing across. Yeah. Thank you very much. So this brings us to the end. Mm -hmm. uh, we've covered a lot of terrain. I mean, I, I have many things in my mind already, 70, 20, 10, uh, mm -hmm. relationship building, networking, AI, machine learning, uh, wonderful pieces of advice. Um, this will be very helpful for the talent out there. It's been a pleasure Thank having you. you here at this talk, and I'd like to wish you very best and happy trainings uh, at your corporation. Thanks so much, Lassie. Thank really, you. really enjoyed this chat with you. Thank you, Elizabeth. All the best. All the best. You. I wanted to share some exciting news with you. My new online on-demand program, How to Advance Your Career, with your current employer is officially live and ready for you. So if you're looking to speed up your career progress, check this program out via the link in the description.